on average, every 150 years, there's a major earthquake in Tehran with a magnitude larger than seven. Now, what is alarming is that the last major earthquake that took place in Tehran was more than 190 years ago. So what happens when the, there's more time gap between the last earthquake, that means that the more energy is being stored in the, in the fault lines. And when that energy is released, then it, it's really going to go into be a, a disaster. So again, on average, every 150 years, there is a major earthquake in Tehran, and the last one took place more than 190 years ago. Now, Tehran has 8 million population. It's one of the most populous cities in the world. Uh, among Los Angeles, among Istanbul, uh, among uh, Jakarta, Tokyo. And among these cities, actually, Tehran is probably the least prepared for the next uh, major event that, that will take place. Now, imagine, take all that and consider the fact that even in lower magnitude than seven, let's say, for example, six, 6.5 earthquakes. A magnitude 6, 6.5 earthquakes in Tehran is going to inflict more damage to the buildings, to the bridges, and we're going to lose more lives than magnitude 8 can inflict in a city like, let's say, for example, Tokyo. Why? Because the, the city of Tokyo is more prepared. So there's more preparation uh, for that. The city of Tehran is far from being prepared for a major earthquake. The essential facilities are not protected. Uh, the, the concept of the resiliency is not implemented. Now, we, we did discuss what the, what the resiliency means, which means that you are going to be able to be able as a society to come back to full functionality or with minimal, minimal repair. Now, consider this, that Tehran is sitting on the, in the many different uh, uh, faults, more than 60 small faults that crisscrossing, and then the Albor's basically fault that is capable of creating a very large magnitude earthquake. There are unreinforced structures that's in Tehran. The hospitals are not base isolated. The only way for the the hospitals to be able to function is, like we said, they're going to have to be base isolated, basically. Because it's not only the frame of the structure that have to survive, but also the content. What's the good about the hospital that all the equipment, the surgical equipment, the MRI machine, the different testing that they have to do is not functional? Of course it's not. The, there are, streets are narrow. There are gas lines. There are bridges that are not designed for the, uh, or retrofitted for the earthquakes. So now imagine this is not a, it's really a, as a structural engineer, when I sit down, when I think about the magnitude of the problem and what, the, what has been done, it is really alarming. A city of 8 million people that is not resilient by any means, the essential facilities are not protected. There's a danger of the uh, fire. There is a water supply. Water supply, I mean, the, the water lines and uh, rupturing and not being able to uh, provide the essential means for the people to, to, to function. And, and on top of that, you have the many old buildings and the new buildings, actually, that you don't know. There is no check and balances, per se. Uh, the same, the same thing actually that, that that actually for some degree that we saw in Turkey, that what the structural engineers do, and what is being built is two different two different things, and 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 in city of, uh, like Tehran, that you don't know what the what the quality of the construction is, what the contractors have done, and uh, so uh, you, you couple all that, and I remember I talked to. Uh, some time ago, 
to someone that was well familiar and they said that really the concern, one of the major concern is that the, uh, the condition of the structure that, are, that, that, that exists right now and, and, and has been uh, basically uh, the existing one. Uh, the, what is that? Uh, what is the, the, the condition? Did they follow the, what the structural engineer said? And, and so on. So um, you consider, and, and one more thing, the default, actually they, uh, I just, uh, actually I, I saw one report that said that recently uh, they uh, uh, were able to identify two additional fault that is even are capable of uh, cre uh, uh, creating larger magnitude earthquakes. And one of them runs uh, right in the middle of the city and by the Mila Tower, which is one of the, the, the tall tower that, that's, in, that, that's in Tehran. No, there, are, there could be even more fault that uh, they are not aware of. And, um, and one thing I, I must say that uh, I think uh, uh, the, the question the, the, the question is that uh, really I think there should be uh, uh, the thinking should be along the resiliency. No, you put all these factors together, and and what I saw again I don't want to go to the political side of the, uh, the issue, but what I hear from the, the basically from the newspapers and the news that. Uh, uh, the authorities, the, the government, the government in Iran. I think they know. I think those are who, those are who are in charge. They know. They know the magnitude of the disaster that can happen. But in their mind, because they, they try to, they try to basically uh, uh, play it low and say that really there's there, there's not a problem. And what they say is that we are prepared. Uh, uh, or in Farsi, they say modiriyate bohran, the, the disaster management. Disaster management in a city like Tehran starts before the earthquake, not after the earthquake. What is the use of, for example, having a 500 staff that are lined up so that they can go and, uh, first of all, they're not gonna be able to reach because the, the, the bridges are going to be, you're going to have it possible to the bridges collapsing, narrow streets, the fire, and everything else, and getting to the people. Even in a city like Kobe, that was well prepared. More than 7,500 people died, and uh, they didn't have a chance to basically uh, uh, to you know, pull them alive out of the rubbles. No, let alone in a city of 8 million, uh, uh, just, just think about the scope of the magnitude. So uh, all this talk, all this talk about the being the prepared the, uh, to, and, and, uh, to having a management, disaster management system in place, it really doesn't make sense. You know, um, I was trying to see that what is the best way probably to, to, to relate this. It's like, let's say you have, a, you have someone that have a heart condition and all their arteries right and the left arteries, almost all clogged up, 90, more than 90%. And you know that the heart, the heart attack can take place in any, any minute. And then you say, you know what? We have an ambulance sitting there and ready. And when he or she have a heart attack, we'll take it to hospital. What good does it do? There's a lot you can do when you know that you have that condition. The same thing in the case of the in the case of a city like Tehran, you know that every, on average, on every 150 years, there is a major earthquakes. The last one took place 190 years ago. So you have to be resilient. You have to, you have to identify the essential facilities. You have to make sure that they are, they, they, they're gonna remain functional during the, the basically the uh, uh, earthquake right after the earthquakes. So these are, now I will make one, one comment. I have had many PhD students that they have obtained their master's degree in some other countries, and then they come to the US and they get their PhD with me. 
I've had students from the Vietnam, from the Far East, uh, from the South Korea, uh, from Middle East, many countries, and Iran coming from the, getting their master degree from very reputable universities, and then coming and getting the PhD with me. I can tell you that they are, they are, they are sharp, they're very knowledgeable. So the question is not that there is, the, the brain power is not there. The major, the major obstacle is that the, 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 those in the authority, they're not paying attention. And I think as a, a, a general public also needs really to put this issue of the, uh, that the, the consequence of the next big earthquake in Tehran, what it can do. It, it, it can be really, it, it's really scary as a structural engineer, I can say from, um, but the, the visiting cities that the, they've been prepared to some extent and what can happen with a, even an earthquake of lower magnitude and let alone in a city that has 8 million. So the general public also, I think, is to put that in the, in, in the forefront of the basically the agenda that, the, that, that should be addressed. There are many things that can be done. Essential facilities needs to be protected. The, uh, the concept of the resiliency at the city level needs to be implemented. The warning system, the city like Tehran, with all this history of the air, big earthquakes in Iran, the warning system similar to several countries, uh, the, uh, the, the Mexico, uh, uh, New Zealand, in the U.S. The, the system is being is being developed in the in the West Coast in the Japan, and so there are examples, and, and and the city like Tehran needs to have that, and there are uh, retrofitting many unreinforced uh, the type of the buildings that's in Tehran, for example. I think the more 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 research basically needs to be done by the uh, by the people basically uh, that are in the uh, in the institutions and so on. In fact, there is an earthquake engineering center in Iran. I've seen it. Um, now I could be wrong, uh, but majority of the studies that I saw was uh, geological st studies, and I saw little um, in the in the way of or uh, little to none actually in the way of the trying to retrofit. The, the challenge in the big cities, really, it's not the new, new buildings or the bridges. The challenge is the existing inventory. That's where the problem lies. The same thing that happened in the Turkey. The, the new ones, the, they are, they're using the latest codes, specifications and so on, so they're better prepared. But it's the old ones that are really problematic, and, and those are the ones that the retrofit upgrade uh, takes a center stage. So anyway, um, uh, I hope that this segment of the, this earthquake uh, engineering um, series was useful and uh, uh, highlighted uh, the, basically the, uh, the magnitude of the disaster that can take place uh, in a city like Tehran, um, and and the time has way passed really to to uh, to do something meaningful, okay, not just words. The disaster management again, disaster management starts before the event takes place, not after, and that's the preparedness is it's all about that, and all about the being resilient.